do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Proud Phoenix Media. We got a really great video tutorial today and I'm excited to showcase about this certain PS2 topic. I don't think it's been discussed on YouTube before from what I can tell. And this is about PS2, OPL, um, SMB share with your computer or laptop. But instead of doing a static IP address method, we're gonna be visiting the DHCP or dynamic host configuration protocol method with the uh, OPL settings. And the reason why you wanna do this is it makes life a little bit easier because you don't have to, let's say your IP address on your computer changes all the time for whatever reason, you don't have to go back into your PS2 OPL settings and change the IP address every time. So there's some cool things we can do with that. And I'll show you two different methods of how you can set up your settings. So that's what today's video is all about. I'm using Windows 10, but I, I suspect um, a lot of this procedure would be similar to you know older Windows or maybe, just maybe, Windows 11 when it comes out later this year. So we'll see. Okay, so what I wanna do first, just a real quick crash course is I have a folder on my desktop. It has a bunch of my OPL files. Most importantly, I have a DVD folder with some example games. And before we get too far, let me just give you a real quick crash course on how you can make sure your games are renamed properly for OPL use. This is not a daily build of OPL. This is the official OPL from the GitHub, which I'll have a link, a link in the video description. So what I have here is I have a program you can download. It's called OPL Manager version 21.7. Great program, I use it all the time to help rename my files for PS2 and also PS1. So once you open up the program, if this is your first time, check for updates, and then next, tell it where your path is on your computer for your files. So here's my OPL folders, so I'm gonna say okay, say save, and then from here, if you have any games that's not named correctly with an ISO, for example, it can uh, fix your ISO name, and then you can also download the cover art, which I did you know, ahead of time here. So if you're more interested in how this works, I have other PS2 video tutorials that goes in more details with this program. Okay, next is let's go over some basic uh, sharing stuff. So if I right click my folder here, go to properties, I'm gonna go to the share folder here and let me remove some of my uh, previous shares just where I at a clean slate here. So let me do this and remove. Okay, so let's say that you got your folder, so you go to share, what you wanna do is, what I like to do at least, is I click everyone, say add, read and write is okay, say share, done. And then down here for advanced sharing, what we can do is click on share this folder. Go ahead and give it a name. I like to give it PS2 SMB. You, of course, can call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna say PS2 SMB. Permissions, we're gonna say everyone, allow. So all this is allow, say apply, okay. Apply, okay. Close, okay, so that's uh, half the battle for the sharing. Um, there's something else we gotta do through con control panel, for example. So let's go through control panel here, or you can go through your taskbar. And what you can do is, I like to go to category here, just make things a little bit easier. Go to network and internet, view, network, status, and task. And then from here, we can go to change advanced sharing settings. And then just double check these settings against mine. So I have this on for network discovery, turn on file and printer sharing, um, this I have turn on network discovery, turn on file and printer sharing. And then down here I have turn off public folder, use 128-bit encryption, turn off the password protect sharing, go ahead and save it, which I did ahead of time. And then the last thing is, it's more of a Windows 10 thing, I suppose, is uh, we want to enable the SMB v1. It's like an older protocol, SMB. If you don't have it enabled, then your PSC will have an issue with detecting your games on your, your computer or laptop, for example. So how do you do that? So I think one of the easiest ways to do that is go to here, uninstall program, but then over here, say turn Windows features on or off. And then what you wanna do next is scroll down where it says SMB. So just make sure that you have all three of these checkboxes checked. I mean, that's what works for me. And then once you say okay, it's gonna ask you to restart and that's what you would do. So as your computer's restarted, you're good to go. We have all our share settings. And then the last piece of it here is, let's figure out your IP address, right? So I can go to the start menu, I can bring out the command prompt, and there's, um, we could type in IP config. And here's my IP address under the IPv4, which is 192.168.1.108. So go ahead, jot that down. That's what is most important for purposes of this video. And then just in case, if you're curious about the other method to allow OPL to recognize your PC, if you don't know your IP address or your IP address likes to change all the time, is we're gonna use, um, you know, we gotta find your computer name, right? So one way of doing that is if you go back through control panel, 
and you go to system, for example, it will tell you what your what your computer name is. You know, usually it says this right here. So my computer name is actually called Office, for example. Um, if there's another way to do this, um, I'll have a link in the video description. There's this really nice bat program I found online. So if I right click and extract it to its own folder, you can run this little bat program and it will actually uh, tell you what your computer name is. So here it says my computer name is Office, just like I expected, right? So this will become more important once you see when I do the next portion of this video tutorial on the OPL settings with my TV here. And that's pretty much it. So just to recap real quick, one, we made sure that our games are properly set up in terms of the naming convention and all that jazz. Second is we wanna make sure we enable the sharing settings on the folder, right click, go to properties, go to sharing, do all that sharing stuff. Third is go through the control panel, go to the network and sharing uh, section and set up all those other additional uh, sharing settings for your, for your network. And then the last part of it is, in case you have issues, is make sure your SMB v1 is enabled. And then last is either get your IP address or figure out what is your computer name, because that would be useful when we enter into the OPL settings. So that's pretty much itch for that portion. So this next video portion of the video tutorial, let's go ahead, we're gonna see my TV here. I'll show you my little network setup, it's nothing fancy. And then we'll get started and have a lot of good times. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the next portion of the video tutorial. Let's do this. All right, so let's go ahead and do this so real quick. Let me go ahead and load into my OPL program, and then I'll show you my PS2 setup with the network connections and everything. So I'm using OpenTuna on my PS2, but you can use FreeMic Boot, um, Free DVD Boot, um, uh, you know, so you know other methods that you wish. Go ahead and check out the PS2 playlist on details and how to, you know, different methods to exploit your PS2. So right now it's automatically loading to my ethernet SMB, but I'll show you the settings in, the, in a second here of how I got that set up. So here's my setup over here. I have my computer with the ethernet cord. And then if I move down the camera, I have my router. This may not be your case, but just it's easier for today's example purposes. So here's my router. I have this cable going to my computer. This other cable is going to my PS2. And then here's the back of the PS2 with that ethernet cable. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and go back to the TV here and show you the OPL settings. So I'm gonna press start, go to network settings, and let me try to adjust the light here a little bit, but this is basically says off, auto, down here, this is where you wanna change it from. What used to be in my other video tutorial says static, we're gonna change that to DHCP. And don't worry about all this network stuff. It does not apply for DHCP. Your router, for example, will automatically assign an IP address correctly to your PS2. What's more important down here is under SMB server. So we're gonna go over two different methods of how to set this up. The first method here, it says IP. So down here is my IP address. So remember on my computer, I used a command prompt and I said IP config. And I got my IP address 192.168.1.108. It may be something different for your computer setup, for your network. It might, you might be like, a, I don't know, 10.0.0.5 or something like that, right? So whatever your IP config, IP address is, type it here. The port is 445, you don't touch that anyways. The share is where you type in PS2 SMB. So I did all capital letters, just like on my computer, for example. Down here for guest, I, I like to use the word guest, all capital letters, that works out fine. And then down here, go to reconnect. And if you have no errors, and make sure you save your changes, if you have no errors, then of course your network settings is working correctly. Otherwise, you would get an error, and plus you wouldn't see your games, you wouldn't see your cover art, if you have any cover art, you know, so on and so forth. So that's one method, or the first method. The second method is to use something called the Net BIOS. So you go back to your network settings screen, go down to here, IP, press X and change it to Net BIOS, right? Now you want to say, what is your address? The address is your PC computer name. So if I go to here, remember that my PC computer name was the word office. So I just have that, it's, it's very case sensitive. So um, in my case, I made all capital letters. If I didn't, it would not connect. So just keep that in mind. So this is office, the port doesn't change. Um, here, this is a share. So I call it PS2 SMB, all capitals, like I said before guest on you know all capital letters that works out fine right password there's no password in either 
the net BIOS method or the IP method, go ahead, go down to reconnect, save changes. And like I said, if everything is working correctly, then your game or games will show on this list here. And just for fun, let's go ahead and run Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So some games I like to play off SMB, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice solution. Uh, it might have better game compatibility compared to USB method, of course. If you have a fat PS2, then, you know, playing games off the internal hard drive might be a better solution for you, but you don't have to. You can definitely use your network adapter and load games off of SMB. Now, there are many different ways of, to do the SMB method. You don't have to have a computer nearby. You can have like a little mini router with a USB attached, or you could use a Raspberry Pi, or like a laptop maybe, or a NAS. There's a lot of different solutions of how you want to accomplish that, um, you know, SMB method here. So clearly, you know, the game works fine. We've seen this game many times in other video tutorials that I've done. So the bottom line is, if you're looking for a simple, a simpler way, of course, to do the network method, SMB, you don't want to be putzing around with the static IP method, then the DHCP is definitely the way to go uh, as an alternative solution, and it might be the easier solution, depending, depending on your case there. So if you guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.